What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing another anti-MLM video. I actually was in the middle of working on another one when this calamity <laughs> happened with Anastasia Beverly Hills and Rodin and Fields. Oh my God, what's going on? So I decided I'm gonna do this one first and we'll push the other one back because this needs to be discussed. And I know a lot of people are already talking about it, but I wanted to give you some of my input. The whole thing, it's crazy. It's like, this is insane. It's important to talk about because there's a lot of things going on and there's a lot of moving parts. So this is happening all in like 72 hours right now. So the other day, Rodin and Fields posted on their Instagram that they were doing a collaboration with Anastasia Beverly Hills. And this was a brow set full of best-selling brow products. It had like their dip brow, it had, um, their brow powder, pencils, stencils, clear brow gel. It was valued at over $127 retail. So anyway, these products were not new by any means, but this collaboration was exclusive to Rodin and Fields distributors and their customers. So basically none of their products were in there because I was like, wait, so are, is it like a collaboration where there's brow products and skincare from Rodin and Fields, which they're known for? Um, not known for, but that's what they do. Was it like two products where you get to buy Rodin and Fields and brow products? No, Rodin and Fields just slapped their name on the packaging and basically as they always do, they just leached off of somebody who is you know, more popular to try to legitimize their own company and push sales. They pretty much had nothing to do with it except for this was exclusive to Rodin and Fields consultants and I don't know why. Like it makes no sense. So they posted this and immediately there was a ton of backlash and people were like, First of all, why are you even doing this? I'm at a loss for words. I still can't figure this out and we'll talk about it. Don't worry. So anyway, tons of backlash and Norvina, the daughter of Anastasia, the owner of Anastasia Beverly Hills, got on Twitter and she first found out about this. She replied to somebody's tweet and said, what is an MLM? I'm not going to fault somebody for not knowing, but I guess if you're like in the business space and not knowing and not knowing who you're collaborating with and you don't know their business model, you know, ugh. Okay, but she said, what is an MLM? And then later that day, she said, I'm all over this. I had nothing to do with it, but this is top priority right now. We care too much about the community to deter our relationships with customers. I've been on it since it was called to my attention. And then she said a little bit later, I don't take customer feedback lightly, although this is not my official announcement since I'm sure they haven't seen our emails yet. Consider that we hear you loud and clear and this partnership is not happening. So then Anastasia Beverly Hills posted yesterday. They said Anastasia Beverly Hills would like to address the members of our community concerned about the test marketing effort conducted with Rodin and Fields. A limited supply of the product was delivered to Rodin and Fields to conduct a short-term test. The brow kits made available have been selling at a very fast pace to Rodin and Fields customers. Consequently, the test will end soon. We know that there are people who feel very strongly, both negatively and positively about MLMs. We respect all of our customers. We will not be continuing this test with RNF. We have not previously participated in MLM marketing. We do not have any plans to do so in the future. Anastasia Beverly Hills will always take seriously the opinions, concerns, and suggestions of our community. Our relationship with you is our number one priority and we will continue to research and educate ourselves on all future activities. So I guess there was a test sent out, you know, this was already in the works and they had already sent this stuff out and then the backlash came. <laughs> These things are obviously done way in advance, sometimes years in advance. So don't know how it slipped through the cracks. Again, we'll talk about that in a second, but the positive thing is it's not happening anymore. So it seems, you know, it's obviously a very bad look that Anastasia Beverly Hills does not, says they don't wanna work with them anymore and that they canceled this. Yes, I know some were sent out. Yes, I know some people got their hands on them and it happened at all. It should have never happened, but I'm glad that it was nixed right away. I have to say, I really think that the response by Norvina, I feel like, I don't know why, I feel like she really just wasn't involved in it at all so I really feel like her swift decision making I have to applaud it I really think that it was a good decision to me this is a very concise clear response from Anastasia Beverly Hills and Norvina saying look we didn't know it was a mistake and we're not working with them anymore we hear your customer feedback and we're not going to do this ever again you know we're not participating in MLMs we're not planning to do so in the future and you know even though they said there's a lot of people who have different opinions on MLMs they pretty much showed us what their opinion is by canceling this testing and you know whatever whatever however <laughs> I don't know who the hell is on Anastasia Beverly Hills PR team because this should never have slipped through. It's unacceptable 
to be in that space and not know about MLMs, not know about the predatory nature of them, not know you know, the financial situations of the people that are working with these companies, how shady it is, how predatory it is, how exploitive it is. It's really not something that I think that we can just be like, okay, you made a mistake. You know, I think that we really need to learn from it. This could have been really bad, okay? I don't think people understand totally how bad this could have been because if they partnered with somebody like Anastasia Beverly Hills, it would have really legitimized their company and given these people even more fuel to enter into MLM start selling for rodent in fields and ultimately lose a ton of money. You're not just losing money in these things, by the way, you're losing relationships. There's so much cost that comes with these, you know, and it comes in many different forms. It's not just financial. You can hear that from anybody who's not in MLMs anymore. There's a reason why they're not in MLMs anymore, okay? So there's a lot of horror stories. You know, I've been doing this for a while now, over a year, and I hear stories every single day and they're horrible. They're horrible. Okay, so this could have been really bad. This was the right decision, but ultimately it's like, how did this even happen? You know, I, I don't understand how there's people on these teams that just don't know about this stuff. Okay, so anyway, I wanted to read some of the comments that are on this Anastasia Beverly Hills post because I think that they tell a story that you'll see. So anyway, I found this comment and I was at a loss for words the other day. So somebody commented on it. Roden in fields is junk, period. And again, we don't know if this person has tried it or not. We don't know if this is a former consultant saying this. We don't know. Then in the comments were all Roden and Fields consultants. The only people who were upset that this collaboration didn't happen were Roden and Fields consultants. But these are some of the Roden and Fields consultants, okay, who commented. Somebody said, I wouldn't call a product created by two Stanford trained der dermatologists who also created proactive junk peace emoji. And then um, somebody else said, sweetie, RNF is the number one premier skincare brand in the US and number two most prestige in the world in only three countries. Junk, this emoji. Somebody said, those are cold hard numbers. We sell more than anyone else, period. What these people mean by sales is, yeah, your employees buy more than anyone else because you're the customer, okay? Not other people, you are. You are. So then I saw one that left me speechless. They're responding to the girl that posted Rodin Fields is junk. They said, based on some of your IG pics, you might want to try their acne line. Then there would be no need for those filters. She said, people like you are laughed at due to hashtag ignorance at its finest. And that had five likes, by the way. Huh. And then another comment. This was a very common comment, okay? So much for women supporting women. So much hate directed at women trying to build a business on their own terms. So many assumptions and so much negativity. It's disheartening. 80% of new restaurants fail in the first five years. 85% of realtors fail in the first five years. 60% of gym memberships go unused. Is the restaurant industry predatory? Real estate? Gyms? Not all businesses will work for all people, but seems quite short-sighted and small-minded to cast aspersions on an entire industry based on the success rate. Even more disheartening, women without sufficient information attacking and slandering other women. Just a shame. So let's break this comment down. She references 8% of new restaurants fail in the first five years, 85% of realtors and 60% of gym memberships. And she says, are they predatory? Um, no, because those things don't go out and recruit people. Those businesses aren't built on the backs of other struggling people and they don't exploit other people and they don't prey on other people. It's funny too that she said realtors, which is just a horrible comparison to draw because realtors don't have to buy homes in order to sell homes. Okay, and they don't have to go out and recruit people in order to make money. They don't make bonuses off of recruiting people. Restaurants don't make bonuses off of recruiting people into the business opportunity. So these are not accurate comparisons to draw whatsoever. I love when people say, you're so uneducated, you're so misinformed when they can't even draw a proper comparison. Here's another thing that she said, so much for women supporting women, so much hate directed at women trying to build a business on their own terms. It makes me laugh out loud whenever people try to say that MLMs empower women and it's women empowering women. Guess what? If you're not in an MLM anymore, the second that you leave, those people are not your friends anymore. They're not going to call you. They're not going to say what's up. Okay. You are a business opportunity to them. Okay. Anytime somebody pitches to you, you are no longer a friend. You're a business opportunity. This is not a friendship. It's not women supporting women and you're not building a business. Okay. You don't own your own business. 
you don't. And you're not doing it on your own terms because if you could, you'd be able to determine the price of your product. It's completely different. And it's a complete slap in the face to actual people who are business owners. You are not a business owner. You are in somebody's downline. You are not the CEO of Rodin Fields. Not even close, okay? So stop saying that it's women building their own business on their terms. And if you really wanna call people uneducated, then let's look at your income disclosure statements, which tell a much more concise story. The 2018 income disclosure statement posted by Rodin and Fields, okay? They posted this. These are their statistics. They have access to this. This has been posted. 2019 doesn't seem to be available yet, so we're gonna have to look at 2018. Let's look at this. And by the way, we're gonna look at the median annual income rather than the average annual income because that way you can kind of weed out outliers. So if somebody made a ton of money at a certain tier, that's not necessarily indicative of what most people are making. That's why I like to look at the median annual income. I think it's much more accurate in the situation. So, okay, 61.3% of paid consultants made $245 a year. Annual income. $245 a year. Not to mention all the products they bought. Way more than $245, I can assure you. So much for women building their own business. No, you're losing money. It shows it right here. 28.9% of paid consultants made median annual income of $2,060 a year. $2,060 a year. That comes out to about $5.64 a day, a day. The way I can support you is to help you get out of these things. You're losing money and the statistics show it. 90% of Ronan Fields consultants, paid consultants, they made less than $2,000 thousand dollars a year. How is that a great opportunity? How is that an opportunity that you just can't keep to yourself? I gotta share it on all my social media. I've gotta alienate all the people that I love, lose all my close friendships, and spend all my money and go into debt because it's such a great opportunity that I have to share it with everybody. Furthermore, 5.9% of paid consultants made a median annual income of $6,654. Okay, now we're up to 95% of consultants. It looks like only 0.5% of paid consultants even made a livable wage. Only 0.5%. So tell me again how this is a great idea. Tell me again how this isn't a scam. This right here tells me everything I need to know about this company. Predatory, expletive, People at the top are making all the money. Everybody at the bottom not making anything. They are working for dollars and cents a day. If Anastasia Beverly Hills had partnered with this company, it would have been one of the worst PR moves I've ever seen in my entire life. You cannot give people fuel to keep entering into these things. They are so dangerous. They are financially dangerous. They are emotionally dangerous. They are mentally dangerous. You know, at the end of this, it's like, I don't know to whether to count this a win or not. I, you know, because the anti-MLM community is obviously so strong that they actually canceled an entire collaboration that they had already in the works. And yes, it was a short-term one that was only supposed to be for Valentine's Day, so they probably didn't make it that big anyway. But it's kind of like, it's kind of bittersweet to me. It's kind of almost inconclusive because I really have to question what the hell is going on over at Anastasia Beverly Hills. You know, I'm really not ready to let them off the hook yet. It's sad that no one caught this no one said anything it sounds like they probably just have a bunch of yes men over there you should have people around you who know these things so it concerns me that they did it it now bothers me that they ever made the connection between the two that they ever even had this collaboration to start with it bothers me okay because now these people are going to use it as fuel even though the, the partnership never went through they're still going to make that connection like oh we partnered with anastasia beverly hills once you know you're going to see people saying that so it's like why did they do this like i'm just so frustrated but i think it's a good learning moment i guess moving forward it's a good way to inform people about ronin fields if you didn't know or if you're looking into this for the first time these are the income disclosure statements this is the reality of what people are making okay Here's what I want, and I think we can all agree on this. We want people to succeed. Everybody in this anti-MLM space, most people you know, in the world, <laughs> okay, we want other people to succeed. We want them to make money. We want them to be able to support their families. We want them to live healthier lifestyles and have clear skin and have great hair and have you know, the life that they always dreamed of and have more time. We want that for people. But the reality is, you're not going to get that with these companies. You're not. And if I can in some way 
help you achieve that life without having to lose a bunch of money, lose a bunch of friends, lose your family, you know, over these pyramid schemes, these multi-level marketing scams, recruitment scams. That's why a lot of us are in this because we want people to be the most successful that they can be. It's not tearing people down. It's not saying you suck, We're, I'm better than you, you're an idiot for joining these things. I hate when other people are succeeding. It's not that at all, okay? So just stop. If that's if that's you saying that, if you're a Ronin Fields consultant or whatever saying that, it's not that. In a lot of ways, we're on the same team. I want you to be a successful girl boss if that's what you wanna be. But I want you to not do that on the backs of other people, okay? I don't want anyone to be successful on the backs of other hardworking people who are struggling to get by. All in all, don't really know how to close this video out. I just wanted to let you know this is the update. This is the recent, you know, <laughs> happenings in the MLM space. Like it's oh, you know, there's always craziness going on. And uh, yeah, I'll be back soon with another video. Like I said, I'm working on another one. It's gonna be pretty good. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. I was lost.